deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us rise to join in the singing of the end.
God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith, to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday at Lent is from the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in the seventh commandment and its meaning. You shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. The epistle is from St. Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, the first chapter. St. Paul writes, The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. 
God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise to the Holy Gospel.
What is going on this morning in our gospel reading on this third Sunday in Lent? Why is our Lord fashioning weapons and making a scene in the temple? If Jesus did these things today, he would surely be canceled for exhibiting toxic masculinity. He would be tried and found guilty of a microaggression and surely be sent for anger management training. Of course, we know that that is all nonsense. In fact, the emotion that John mentions of Jesus this morning is not anger, but zeal. Zeal for his father's house consumes him. Zeal, a divine jealousy for the things of God and for the people of God. For though God's presence no longer rests in the temple. It is still the Father's house. And Jesus shows that zeal for it. God's people are still his people, and they belong to no one else, and God will show his jealous love for them. That cleansing of the temple that day is a sign that something new has come. As John reminds us in the beginning of his gospel, Jesus in the flesh now tabernacles among us. The temple is no longer needed. And though it is no longer needed, Jesus still cleanses it because the perfect sacrifice has now come. The true and greater temple is here, not made with hands, with stones and mortar, but from eternity, born of the Virgin Mary. And so Jesus cleanses the temple that day, much like you would clear a plot of land before you would build a new house in it. He cleanses the temple as a sign the temple has shifted from the great stones of Herod's temple to the solid walls of his own flesh and blood, the temple of his body that will be crucified and destroyed and in three days rise again. Still, it is quite a scene John depicts for us. Picture the livestock barns found at county and state fairs, animals lined up being prepared for purchase and then a short while after being prepared for slaughter. The tables set up for the exchange of currency to then go and purchase those animals set up back in the narthex of our own church. It was always a rather chaotic scene between the oxen, the sheep, the pigeons, the cattle, the cries of the money changers, I'm sure some of them giving a better exchange rate than others. All of these present within the courtyard. And there Jesus approaches and takes leather straps that he finds, I'm sure, that were used for leading the animals into the temple courtyard, <coughs> laying about on the ground, waiting for the end of the day to be picked up and hauled back out. And he wraps them together to create a whip, driving the animals out of the temple. Imagine the sounds the clanging coins hitting the ground and the pavement. Tables flipping like a bad family night monopoly game gone wrong. It is no accident 
that this takes place at Passover. But the Passover meant sacrifice. It meant blood and atonement. It meant rescue. And we again remember John's words when he first points to Jesus in John's Gospel. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The true Lamb is now present. And the sacrifice that must be given in the Old Testament at least had to take place in the temple. In the Old Testament, of course, following the pattern of the tabernacle, the temple was the place where God dwelled with his people. It is where God made himself known to his people, where he wanted them to know that he still cared and loved and forgave them. It's where he met them and gave them his holiness. It's where God forgave sins. And it's where he reconciled himself to sinners. The Old Testament tabernacle and temple were the answer to the question, where do you go as a sinner? After all, sin demands sacrifice. It demands payment, cleansing. And so God had given his answer in the form of the temple, of the sacrifices, of the blood. God wanted you, God wanted them to have forgiveness. And they did so at the temple, where God promised to forgive their sins and to make atonement. But all of those things, the tabernacle, the temple, the altar, the sacrifices, the oxen, the sheep, the pigeons, the cattle. They were all meant to point to the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. They were all meant to point to Jesus. For it is Jesus and his sacrifice that forgives our sins. For our sins demand payment too. Atonement. Cleansing. And where do we find that? With our own hands? How can stained hands cleanse or purify anything? How can we stand before the Father when our hearts are so consumed with zeal for wrongdoing and sin, with idolatry and misuse of God's name, with nothing in our hands but our failures to honor authority, to care for our neighbors, to remain pure in heart and mind, to speak well of our neighbor's reputation, to be content? God's law reveals our sin and the need for a sacrifice. Where do we go for our sin to take care of it? Some, I hear, head out into the forest where they pray to God. And yet the trees don't respond the sound of the wind blowing through the leaves doesn't tell us that we've been forgiven for our sins and our mistakes. Others head to the lake or to the river to enjoy the soft sound of the lapping water against the side of the boat. And yet there we are again not given a reminder that our sins are forgiven. And though we may not necessarily like it, God points us to a place and to a time, just as he did his own people in the Old Testament. He pointed them to a place 
and a time. For when you are carrying the load of debt and guilt and the burden of your sin, you know where you can meet God's forgiveness and receive it each and every week. At 9.15, at 31100 23 Mile Road in Chesterfield Township, Michigan, 48047. For it is here that the sacrifice comes. But we don't have to offer a sacrifice to Him. For the sacrifice has always, already been offered. For Jesus' life was not taken from him, he gave it up of his own accord, sacrificing himself on the altar of the cross, bearing your sin, your burdens, your guilt upon the tree of the cross. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, Jesus said. Truly, he gave up his life. It was destroyed there on the tree of the cross, forsaken by his Father. But that would not be the end. For in three days, Jesus would rise again. The Jews wanted a sign. And that was the sign. His death his resurrection. Why do we believe what we believe about Jesus? It's because he's risen from the dead. In Jesus, you live. From the new and greater temple of his crucified and risen body, God's holiness now extends to all nations, to all people, to you. And in Jesus, you are reconciled to the Father, made holy in his sight, forgiven, redeemed, paid for. For Jesus is your atonement. In Jesus, you hear the words, as the disciples did after Jesus' resurrection, and believe the words that he speaks to you. In Jesus you receive the true Passover meal of Jesus' body and blood. And in Jesus the temple of God in human flesh, in simple water and words are given to cleanse and purify you. In his saving name, you become the temples of the Holy Spirit. But the disciples didn't get it. They didn't get it until much later. Until after Jesus himself had risen from the dead, after the temple of his body had been thus destroyed, and in three days he rose again. Knowing that your bodies too are temples of the Spirit, it too will suffer from death. And like the body of Jesus, though, you too will rise. The sin and death that destroy this body of ours. Nevertheless, Jesus will raise it up again. Not in three days, but on the day of his appearing. Believe it. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and protect your heart and mind in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to please rise and join with me as we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, your Son's cross and crucifixion is folly to the world, but it is the source of repentance and forgiveness for all his elect. Preserve the preaching of the cross in our midst, that from this life-giving tree we would continually receive your faith-preserving gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord of the perfect law, you have blessed us to honor our parents and all authorities that it may go well with us in our land. Bless Joseph, Kamala, Mike, Gary, Debbie, and Lisa, and all who govern over us. Make them wise in your ways, that your justice may be upheld among us. Help us to serve and obey them in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we lift your name on high as you continue to preserve the work of Concordia Ann Arbor and Concordia, Wisconsin. Grant wisdom to the leaders and regents as they work wisely to lead these schools into the future according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, your steadfast love in Christ is good. Turn in your abundant mercy toward all who suffer in our midst, especially Kathy, Paula, Vera, Mike, Lee, Norma, Vicki, The Roots, Marianne, Fred, Larry, Gary, Vic, Mike, Craig, Jennifer, Corinne, Peggy, and Donna. Do not let the flood sweep over them, nor the pit close its mouth on them. Deliver them and grant them healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer, though we cannot even discern all our errors, declare us innocent in the Christ of all hidden faults, and by your Holy Spirit, keep us back from presumptuous sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. O Lord, you bless this day and make it holy with your word and the gifts of your altar. Grant that we may come before your presence to eat your Son's body and blood, not boasting of ourselves, but of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer, three days after the temple of your Son's body was destroyed by wicked men, he raised it up again. Grant that on the last day, we and all the saints who now rest in your presence may share in the glory of his resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join now in the singing of the office.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord Almighty Father, Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil, and gave us life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Depart now in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Welcome to the Lord's table. The body of Christ given for you. The Lord bless you and keep you always in your baptism. Amen.
pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Just a few things to highlight, and most of them are already in your bulletin or were on your calendar that hopefully you picked up last week, if not, remember to pick it up here in just a few short minutes. 
Number one is next Sunday, there are a couple of things to remind you of. Um, first thing is we will be taking a door offering um, to help support and pay for some of the costs that we're going to have um, with Pastor Old's memorial service in June. So if you would like to leave a special offering that day for that specifically, um, we'll have an extra offering plate out back in the narthex for you to be able to do that as well. As you notice, probably in the bulletins, looking at the financials, there have been some monies that have already started coming in. Um, but as approved by the congregation at our last voters meeting, we decided to go ahead and take a special door offering for that as well. Also next Sunday, please remember if you would like to order Easter flowers for the sanctuary on Easter Sunday, that is due next Sunday. Um, so there are still forms that you can pick up back again in the narthex um, to select what flower you want and if you want them in honor of someone or in memory of someone, those are back there. Please make sure that you get those to either Sarah's desk or to Carol. Um, so that we can get that order placed here in the next few days as well. Also, a couple of other things coming up in the not-too-distant future. Wednesday afternoon and evening, of course, we have our Latin midweek services, so please come and join us. Dinner is at 6 o'clock. If you want to come here at noon and come to church and then stay for dinner, you're more than happy to hang out with me for the rest of the day. <laughs> I've noticed we've had a couple folks who have shown up for service, and then they come back for dinner, and then there must be gluttons for punishment or something, or maybe they just really need that much of God's grace. They come back for church again in the evening, so always feel free, and then of course you can hear how the sermon changes between one service and another, so please don't forget that on Wednesday. Also, of course, coming up is going to be a fundraising committee hosted spaghetti luncheon in March on the 17th as well. If you have questions about that, you can talk to Carol or Diana. Um, and, and there is also a sign-up sheet available. And there was one other thing that you wanted me to announce, Carol, and well, you told me right before church, so it's gone. <laughs> Shepherd, I had a number of folks who approached me and said, Pastor, we've heard that you've done a Bible class about this, and at the Bible class you actually gave out sheets on funeral information um, and planning your own funeral. Well, I was just reminded because I saw those folks who asked me last week about those sheets, and well, sometimes happens your pastor forgot. So, I am printing more of those off. And they will be available back in the narthex. Um, again, they are not necessarily, I know I'm just saying this for the sake of saying it, they are not necessarily legally binding unless you make them a part of your will when you go to meet with your lawyer. Um, they are the directions that you may be giving to me or to the pastor or to your family as well and giving them directions on how you want your funeral or your memorial service cared for. So those will be available. I've got a couple that are already printed off, but I need to staple them. Yes, Kathy? Just to remind you, I also had a book yes. for you publishing. Yes. Issued, or they, has, a, has on the website. Yeah, they, they also have a book about funerals. Uh, that we sometimes have available. I don't think we have any copies here at church at this point. But I do have some copies of those funeral planning worksheets available, and I will make sure that we have some more available back in the narthex for you to be able to pick up. I know it's not always.
always the most pleasant thing to have to talk about and discuss with your family. But this is, in a way, uh, as I shared with one of our families last week, this is, in a way, the one last way that you can confess your Christian faith to not only your church family, but to your earthly family as well, and the hope that you have in Christ. And what better way of doing that than being able to plan it yourself than letting maybe your children or a neighbor or, well, even your pastor <laughs> having to plan it himself. So, just a gentle reminder that if you want to pick those up, I will have a few available, and then, of course, I'll have more on Wednesday and for next Sunday as well. Okay. Walter. Time change next week. That's right. We have a time change as well. So don't forget, spring forward next week. Um, <laughs> there is some clapping. There's also probably some beating and gnashing of teeth going on, too. Who knows? I don't know where you stand on the whole time change thing. That's for another discussion. That'd be a great topic on Wednesday night around the dinner table. There we go. That's my apology to my question. Do you like the time change or not? No. <laughs> so, anyways, do not forget. Change your clocks next Sunday morning. Um, and hopefully you won't be late. There you go. There you go. The Lord be with you. Amen.